quick late night human experiment. I've just built the foundations of a new motor. This is one we're familiar with. If I give it a spin with that death motor load and no external load attached to it, it spins quite readily. What I have here is a jumper wire. I'm going to spin it and short it out and show you what happens. Fairly vicious response. This coil here is 1.7 K ohms. Um, and it's causing a few problems. Although it works great, and I get a lot of torque for a small amount of energy input, which is good, what I would actually like is to crack the 200 RPM limit, which is still quite low for a motor, but all I'm getting is 220 RPMs at 520 volts. But actually what I want is several thousand RPMs at a low voltage, like a normal motor. So what I've done is I've spent most of the day constructing this. The inside of this, as you can see, has a copper strip going up, wrapped around and come back in again. Now, the magnets in this one are 40 millimeters by 70 millimeters. These ones here are only 50 by 30. However, um, even smaller magnets had a very vivid response during the construction of this motor. But in this instance, as you can see, I have a jumper wire attached, give it a spin, and, and it spins actually quite well, despite the obvious lack of bearing. If I take the jump wire off, exactly the same, depending on how lucky the spin is. So, what can we conclude from this? Thin layer of copper strips won't work very well. That's odd if you've ever seen the experiment of a magnet being dropped through a copper tube. I don't have any copper tube to demonstrate that, oddly enough at least not a straight piece. The, uh, all I have is from a still, so it's not entirely convenient. But what I do have is a rather large piece of copper sheet. So, I'm going to leave this strips of copper tape on there, which incidentally was about 25 or 30 turns. So, not much more than an ohm or two. I'm going to leave that on there for load testing and so forth and simply put an entire strip of copper around the whole motor and see what happens. And if I can't move the magnets, that's a good sign. So, the plan is to put a cut down the line and simply insert a transistor in between and see if we can apply the similar sort of principles as we have in this motor and one with a much more convenient geometry. So, I'll tack that video back on to tomorrow and see how it goes. I'm fairly optimistic because everybody has seen the video of dropping a magnet through a copper tube. So, sort of has to work. Okay. I'll see you in the AM.